Hello and welcome to the final segment of the State of District 88 for the 2018-2019 school year. I'm Dr. Scott Helton, Superintendent of District 88, and I thank you for joining us today. This ongoing segment features the news and success of District 88, which is comprised of Addison Trail and Willowbrook High Schools. We look forward to sharing with you the great accomplishments of your hometown high schools through this program. Today we're excited to highlight the tremendous academic success of a Willowbrook student, as well as the amazing performing arts success of an Addison Trail student, both of whom graduated on May 19th with the class of 2019. With me today are Addison Trail principal, Mr. Michael Bolden, and recent Addison Trail alumnus, Connor Wright. Well, Connor, you've had an amazing run through the last four years uh, within the performing arts area. And you, you want to talk about it? Maybe take us through from freshman to senior year, kind of a broad brush picture of your journey. Oh, wow. All right. Um, it's kind of crazy because looking back all the way to freshman year, I don't think I am the same person that I am at all today because freshman year, I was way too scared to do anything in front of anybody. So I, I auditioned for, for one, of the, one of the plays at school and, and I, had, I had a smaller, smaller role in it, but that, that was enough for me because I knew it was just gonna open a window for, for something in the future because it, it has always been my dream to pursue this, but I was always too, too scared to actually open up in front of people to, and like show, show all my emotions and, on stage, but I remember like freshman year, the winter season was coming around and auditions for the musical were, got, were about to happen and all my friends were trying to push me to do it and I was, I was so ready. I, I got the audition packet signed by all my teachers. I had practiced the song that we had to prepare multiple times and it got to the day of auditions and I had never sang in front of anybody before. It was always kind of like a sing in the shower kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But it got to that day and I had to back out because I was so nervous. And I think like I, I look back at that moment and I just don't even recognize like how, how I could act that way because I think I owe it to a lot of the people at AT for helping me open up throughout like sophomore, junior and senior year because I don't think I would be the person I am today without them. And AT Theater has really helped open me up completely. Who are the people at Addison Trail that helped you open up? I mean, besides my friends, you know, Miss Anna Louise McSweeney, she's always kind of pushed me to, to greatness. Like, she's always looked out for audition opportunities for me and always kind of helped me with anything that I needed. And she's just been a great guiding light throughout this entire, like, dream of mine so far. And even though I'm not, like, attending Addison Trail anymore, I can totally see myself going back to ask her questions for help on auditions and stuff like that. Because the, the education that she gave me without even having her as an actual teacher at school is kind of invaluable and I don't think I would be anywhere without her. Over the last four years, you've been in 14 different productions. Highlights? Man, I think, I think one of my, my favorite moments was, was during Greece back in 2017, I think it was. That was, my, that was my first musical. And I don't, I don't remember who said it, but someone said that we almost never really sell out on the musicals, especially because the past few years hadn't been, been big name shows. But I remember Friday night, the, um, I remember it was so great. Miss, Miss McSweeney came backstage and was like, we're about to sell out. We're about to sell all all of the seats in the in the theater and my first thought was what if my parents aren't here but they, they were <laughs> but but that's that's not that's not what it was i just remember after performing grease lightning which was probably my favorite part of the show the audience erupted in applause and it was the most rewarding feeling that i've ever felt in my life because i didn't know that that an audience could be riled up i, I mean i'm sure it had to do with like it was Greece, so it, all that nostalgia came back and everyone in the audience, but, but that moment that, that the song ended, the lights froze on everybody on stage, and the audience just started clapping was, was probably the, the best moment of, mm -hmm. of theater in high school for me. 
then uh, you also had roles as Don Lockwood in Singing in the Rain, yeah. and uh, this year was pretty special too. Right? Yeah, this year uh, Newsies was was probably my my favorite show that that we've ever done at AT or or in my in my career so far because it kind of taught me a lot of valuable lessons about mm -hmm. about life because the the character that I played Jack Kelly he's always trying to like run away from from every single hard situation that comes into his life that he has to play through and I had been going through a few things during during the time that we were rehearsing and I just kind of remember reading through the script one day and although Jack and I weren't the same person I saw a lot of similarities between him and I because we always tend to act out on our emotions and stuff like that and at the end of the show the character kind of realizes that that he just has to take a step back and realize mm -hmm. that everything's okay and so every single moment that we got to perform that show at that scene it was really like heartwarming for me mm -hmm. and it was just great and that show just has such a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Now, Principal Bolden, you've had the opportunity to see, I, mean, I think you've seen every show yeah. over the last 40 years and since you've been principal. And you want to talk about what you've experienced as far as uh, Connor's growth over time. A absolutely. I, as Connor mentions, uh, uh, that sophomore year in, in Greece, uh, that performance that was there, I remember being there and, and having that performance. So it wasn't just a nostalgia, it was just an incredible performance. And I, rem I I honestly remember going in the program and saying, you know, who is this student who's coming out to sophomore year is out on the stage and the, and the singing and performance, the, the whole package of his acting and everything together was that. And I look it up and I see, you know, Connor White and that he's only a sophomore. And so then I'm elated to say, here, here's a student that we're going to have for three more years. Because many of the comments that some of our students in theater have when they become seniors is there, there's a regret that I didn't get involved early enough or I didn't get on stage and audition for for uh, spots early enough maybe they did their junior and senior year and wish they would have freshman and sophomore and so uh, knowing that we had that and, and looking forward to what the next three years would bring um, and he really fulfilled that and well well beyond any expectation that I think he even had I know I I had or Mrs. McSweeney even had and to see his continued growth to the point that not only is he doing great things in all the roles whether it's a musicals the fall play or our spring performances that we have for him to stretch himself and challenge himself um, to compete at, at a state level and really show his talents off not just for our, our school and our local community but to really do it at a state level and, and to see his desire and passion to stretch himself and that's what we want all our students to do academically, mm -hmm. athletically, extracurricularly and you're a prime example of that Connor that you have, have done that in the classroom as well as uh, in, in the things that you love to do that you're passionate about and come to school excited about each and every day and I think what Connor's legacy is not just his performances in all the different shows that he's had, but the leadership that he's helped to grow the theater program, to bring in younger students and encourage them to, to not be afraid of performing and, and being on the stage. I think that that's gonna be the legacy that he leaves at uh, Addison Trail High School as well as Addison Trail Theater. So I, I, I thank you for those four years and hope you continue to come back and, uh, and help, with a, help with the program and, and share the great things that I know you're going to go on and do. And we have a history of that. Many alums at Addison Trail continue on in their careers in some way, shape, or form in theater or television, whether it's on the stage or behind the scenes. Um, that passion that started in high school continues on into career, and I know, I know Connor will do this very similar to that in the future. Thank you. And I, and I, I have to say, you know, it's, it's the typical Addison Trail story where, where you one of the best at Addison Trail, and that also puts you up against the best in the state because it was a cold winter morning in uh, the winter of 2018 that we were both in yep. Bloomington to watch Big Fish, which yeah. was the all-state play. And I know you've been all-state twice, and that Big mm -hmm. Fish production actually went to the International mm -hmm. Thespian Festival in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. You want to talk about that, okay, so moving from Addison Trail to that next level, all state, yeah. and then competing for one of the best productions in the nation, if not internationally, yeah. so we we'll talk about Big Fish a little bit. Oh, I, 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 Big Fish is probably one of my other favorite shows that I've been a part of because I, I remember seeing the all state show 
before Big Fish, it was Sweeney Todd, and I remember the talent on stage was just so inspiring and kind of shocking, because I didn't know like high schoolers could sing and dance like that, and I just remember thinking to myself, like if I could push myself, maybe I could get a part of, of this ensemble. And we went through the audition process, and, and it was pretty challenging because the choreography was a lot harder than anything that I had attempted before. It was a lot of like fast movement and, and like big formation, stuff like that. But I ended up getting a part in, in one of the best experiences of my life. And just being a part of Big Fish at the state level was, was more than enough already because I'm being, being involved with a show with all of these other people who love it just the same amount of you, or just the same amount as you, it's so inspiring because not that, not that Addison Trail or, or, or D88 doesn't have dedicated students all throughout their programs, because they do, but it's, I remember going into that room and it just felt like they were kind of clones of, of me in, in a way, because they all kind of had the same ambition and that was enough to make that production great in, in my mind. And, you know, it, it kind of felt like we made a family in that show. And we, we stopped our performances at the state level at ISU. And we never said goodbye because we had such a strong bond that we knew that even if we didn't make it to internationals, we were going to uh, definitely stay in touch and and stay, stay connected because we wanted to see these people again. And when we found out that our show was one of the 11 chosen for the International Thespian Festival down in Lincoln, Nebraska, that was kind of a message saying that we were good enough and all of our artistic endeavors and, and, and triumphs and hardships that we faced trying to get this show to succeed were, were more than worth it. And going down to the International Thespian Festival was, was crazy because I remember mentioning, or I mentioned before, being in the room with all those people that were as dedicated as you to that, that art and craft was, was already kind of overwhelming. But being on the campus of Lincoln, Nebraska, um, and it was filled with all the same people was was crazy because these were all these dedicated theater kids and you just made friends so easily. And I honestly remember all of the memories and friendships I made through Big Fish more than I remember performing the show, which is kind of crazy to think about, but I just don't think I'll ever be able to thank the um, Illinois Theater Association enough for, for what they gave us. Excellent. Well, not, not only were you All-State once, but you were All-State twice because you got to perform in, in the Heights this year. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you had a special uh, experience late in the spring with the Broadway in Chicago's uh, Illinois High School Music, uh, Musical Theater Award. Do you want to talk about that experience? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I remember finishing up Newsies, and I, I had been a part of the Illinois High School Musical Theater Awards the year prior for Don Lockwood. But I, I kind of used that year as a, as a warm up for what I hoped I could have accomplished this year. And, and I kind of did. I, I wanted to see what the entire experience was like. And then going into it this year, I, I just loved the character that I played so much. And I felt like a special bond between Jack and I. And I didn't really. Honestly, the, the award for that, for that competition was the competition itself to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think winning would have made it any better because it was already perfect in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I remember being on that stage when they announced the winner, who was Jacob Simon. I remember the look in his eyes was just so happy. He had, he had just been like engulfed in this, this positivity. and. And just looking at him was the most rewarding thing that I've ever that I've ever seen. 
and related to the IHSMTA awards because he was just so happy to receive that award and I don't think anyone else deserved it, mm -hmm. regardless of how hard I tried. Well, you've had an amazing career at both the local level at Addison Trial School and then the state and the national level. What's next? You know, I, I, I'm going to COD to get my gen eds done before I can transfer on to any, any bigger university just because I think it's the most sound and, and safe way and route to go. Um, but I will be taking private lessons for singing, dancing, and acting, all that stuff, so I can stay, stay on track with others my age who are trying to accomplish the same thing as I, or as myself. Um, so I don't think it's a setback. A lot, of, a lot of people will view going to community college as a setback for their dreams or what they want to accomplish, but I don't think that's the case at all. No, I mean, we're very lucky in, the, in DuPage County. We have one of the finest uh, community colleges in the country, and they've got a, a spectacular performing arts program yeah. also. So well, on behalf of District 88, the Building Administration, Board of Education, I'd like to congratulate you for your great success. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back to highlight the outstanding academic accomplishments of a Willowbrook student. Welcome back. With me now are Willowbrook Principal Dr. Daniel Krauss and Willowbrook alumnus Jackson Hathaway. How about that Willowbrook alumnus now, huh, Jackson? <laughs> it's crazy. Congratulations on an incredible four-year career, and we're here to talk about your academic success. Uh, you're getting ready to go off to Annapolis. Uh, you're going to be uh, working uh, educationally or academically at the uh, United States Naval Academy. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. I'd like to have you talk about, though, your four years in preparing for this incredible appointment. So. Well, what's kind of kind of crazy is like a lot of people, like when I talk about Annapolis and when I talk about like, oh, what inspired you? Like I'll say, well, both my parents were in the Navy and like they met in the Navy. That's how like they got married and that's kind of how my whole story started. But really like even though that's the case, I didn't really start thinking about Annapolis till earlier this year or, or later later 2018. So later in your junior year, you yeah. started thinking about it. I, because I was looking at my college search and I was like, well, my parents were in the Navy and like, you know, there's the, there's West Point, but there's also like Annapolis. So maybe it'd be a good shot to apply there. And, you know, when I started looking at my transcript, thinking about the courses I've taken, I was like, oh, maybe I have a decent shot at getting in there. So I started the application process, started getting to work on it. And, you know, just some crazy, couple crazy months later, now here I am about to leave in a month to go start my training. And it's just something that I never really dreamed of it by freshman year, but it's a really big surprise, not in a bad way, but in a really good way. And that's something you know I'm really glad about. What other colleges were on your list at the end of your junior year? <laughs> um, so basically, I, had, I was always wanting to be a lawyer. I always loved arguing, I always loved debating, the good and the bad parts that come <laughs> with that. Um, but so I had a lot of Ivy Leagues. I applied to Harvard, Yale, Columbia. I applied to U of I. And U of I actually gave me a pretty good offer. It was between U of I and the Academy. But in the end, the Academy won out just because it was such a well-rounded offer, gave me a really great education, and I had a secure job going out of it. If I'm, if I'm a prospective high school student sitting at home right now watching this, and I dream of uh, West Point or the Naval Academy or Air Force Academy. What kinds of courses should I be thinking about taking? What kind of grades should I be thinking about earning? You want to share that with us? Oh, definitely. So, you know, West Point, all the service academies, West Point, Annapolis, you know, Boulder, um, or not Boulder, Colorado Springs, they're all great schools, but really like w what they've been focusing on in these most recent years is engineering. So like even though I personally am going to major in political science and I'm going to take a social studies coursework, I still took AP science courses junior and senior year. I took another advanced physics course senior year even though I didn't have to just because they're really looking for people despite whatever you're going into. They want people that are talented in engineering and math that at least understand what they're getting into because in the military, especially in our modern era, you know, even regardless of whatever you're working for in the military, whether you're a pilot, whether you're a surface officer, you're gonna need to know like engineering and science and like how that applies to like what your job is. So like with coursework, you're definitely want to get gonna to wanna to take advanced science courses, advanced physics, chemistry, stuff like that. And grades, you know, it kind of goes without saying, you gotta really apply yourself as hard as you can in classes. You gotta get the best grades that you can. 
And that doesn't mean like putting tons of pressure on yourself to get 95s in all your classes, get all A's. Like it's really okay to get like B, uh, B here or there. It, you don't have to like really stress about it. You know, as long as you're trying your hardest and getting the highest grades that you can, and it's really showing in your transcript that you're putting in your utmost effort, then, you know, I think you're setting yourself an, up in a good place. And if you're thinking about it, whenever you start thinking about it, that's when you got to start really applying yourself. Any teachers along the way, if you want to give a shout out to teachers who made a difference in your life <laughs> academically? Yeah, my freshman year, I had my first AP course, AP Human Geography, and I really had no idea like what AP meant. I was like, oh, there's this advanced course that you're supposed to be learning college curriculum. That sounds hard, but like, I'll try it. I'll see what see what the challenge is. And I had Mr. McGuire as my teacher, and he was really engaging and he was definitely one of my best teachers like even even though I only had him for freshman year I kept like I would always come back and talk to him I TA'd for him junior and senior year I always found his coursework engaging and he was just great for discussion whether it's on human geography or US government it was he was always just one of the most engaging teachers that I thought and I always found his class you know something that I would look forward to and also my counselor Mr. Forecash he was or yeah he was my counselor and my golf coach and he was always a very helpful always trying to make sure that I was doing the best I can always trying to make sure I was in the best opportunity that I had you know always concerned whether it was in golf or whether it was in anything you know he really cared for me and all the students that he had as counselor and Mr. Forecash and Mr. McGuire were just two great people that I had known since freshman year that always helped me throughout my four years at Willowbrook. Dr. Krause, how about a principal's perspective watching the amazing growth of sure. a, a young student into a very, uh, you know, had so many challenges themselves and, and moves to that next level and yeah. puts himself amongst the best in the state, country, and world? Well, I think, you know, Jackson, you, your words speak in your actions and, and your work has spoken for itself. You know, you, you have talked about being a, a well rounded student and, and what the academies look for. And we know that you know when you serve our country, um, the pride that all of us feel, knowing that uh, you're going into uh, going that route. But I think most importantly, it's been um, how Jackson models for others. Uh, I've seen you at countless, um, not just um, in the hallways or in classrooms, but in, a, in large award ceremonies, speaking to you know a thousand people at a time. Um, how you carry yourself, uh, how you work with our staff on a daily basis, how other students watch you uh, and emulate you, and I think most importantly, how humble you are. You, 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 you do it by smiling and laughing and enjoying life and encouraging people to work hard and, and do their best work, but not to overstress themselves thinking that everything has to be perfect because you recognize that probably the best growth you've ever had is when you've made mistakes. Mm -hmm. And now you get a chance to, to go on and do amazing things uh, beyond Willowbrook High School. We're just proud of the, the opportunities you've had with us to really showcase your talents and skills. So it's been a, it's been a daily basis for, Jack, you know, for us to watch Jackson grow and, and really uh, showcase his talents. Uh, we're all very excited for what's, what's next. Dr. Krauss, there was a, a moment this spring where you shared some information that was just incredible. Sure. You know, placing Jackson not only in the state, nationally, but mm -hmm. also like worldwide. Do you want to talk sure. about that? So, you know, we we take pride in the fact that our, we offer an amazing curriculum in District 88 and opportunities for students to take a multitude of classes, whether it be advanced placement, dual credit. Uh, in essence, trying to give you a post-secondary. Um, post high school experience while you're still with us so, because we feel like that's the best support. So Jackson has immersed himself in, in, in many of those courses including advanced placement um, including his advanced placement government and, and politics um, course and, and took that exam and you know we do have students who earn fives on their exams and Jackson is, is which is, is the no top score. Top five score. is right. best score you can get in an advanced right. placement exam. So one through five and five being the best uh, the highest score that you can earn um, but on this particular exam, uh, received a letter in the spring, and have never received this letter before. Uh, and it just simply said that one of your students uh, earned not only a five, but a perfect score on the advanced placement exam. And that it was only one of 113 individuals in the world on this exam that earned the perfect score. So uh, I couldn't get to the phone call quick enough to you at the same time to call him down to the office to, uh, to really celebrate that. And, and, I, and I, I remember it vividly because he's, he came in and, and congratulated him. He said, oh, 
that's pretty cool. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was, and I think that speaks again to who you are as an individual. You, you, you go about your business, but you also recognize that um, there are things ahead of you that you're still going to accomplish. Um, so congratulations again on that. Thank you very much. Uh, we celebrated Thank that school-wide, yeah. district-wide, yeah. obviously. Um, and, and I think now he was tutoring quite a few folks for the government exam, I'm sure, this, <laughs> this year. So, <laughs> Jackson, how does that feel to find out you're one of the top 113 students in the world on that exam? I mean, how does that, your thoughts, how you reflect it? It, it kind of hit in like a couple phases. It's like the first phase, it was like kind of hard. It was, it was pretty hard to comprehend. Like I just, it's never something you aim for. I remember like I, in my freshman human geography class, the first AP class, one of our students asked like, oh, well, what if you get a perfect score? And Mr. McGuire was like, it's like, I don't want you guys to focus on getting a perfect score because the odds of that are just so ridiculously low. You know, you just want, you don't want to like, you want to focus on getting that five, getting the best score you can. And so it's not something you really ever think about, not something you think about as a possibility. So like the second thing I did was I looked up like some numbers. I was like, okay, so what does this really mean? I saw that about 350,000 students took the AP, the same AP exam as I did that year. So, and then I did a little dividing and I mm -hmm. found that that was like 0.03% that got a perfect score. And I was like, wow, this is actually something that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then I tried to think back to the exam day, tried to think back like, okay, what did I feel when I was taking this exam? And ironically enough, it was some, one of those that I hadn't really studied as much for because I, always, I watch the news and I pay attention to politics a lot. That's kind of my thing. That's my little hobby when I get home. I'll watch the news, I'll watch like political programs. So it was like a lot of material that I was already familiar with. So I felt really comfortable and confident about that test. But I never really, never imagined, not in my wildest dreams, that like I'd be getting that letter from the college board, I'd be in that situation. So when that actually happened, it was just hard to comprehend, like, wow, this actually is something that I did. And it's like, it was, it was really exciting and really something mm -hmm. that made me really happy and felt really fulfilling. So what's next? <laughs> what's next? So um, in about one month, almost, almost exactly one month, I will be arriving at Annapolis to start my summer training and I'll be starting my summer program, which is a lot of physical stuff, a lot of basic entry education, a lot of basic military education. And then at the end of August, I will be sworn in to the U.S. Navy and I will be begin my four-year college career at the U.S. Naval Academy, which is basically like any other four-year college, just with additional military education, additional military programs, a uh, big fitness standard, lots of sports, lots of extracurriculars. And then once I graduate from there in 2023, I will begin my minimum five-year stint as an officer in the U.S. Navy. And at that point, you know, it's too far in the future for me to know what's going on. I just have a vague idea, and it's just something that it's going day by day. Um, do we still see law as uh, an aspiration here? You know, law was always something that I would love to do. It's just, you know, I definitely would love to go back to law school having that opportunity. Um, and the U.S. military does give a lot of opportunities for education, a lot of funding for higher education for people who serve. So definitely down the line, if I was going to get another degree, if I was going to go back to school, it would definitely be for law. And I could totally see that in my future. It's just kind of hard to look ahead when there's mm. so much stuff in front of me. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see through that all mm. and get to that stage. But. Now, and, and beyond the academic piece, as far as advanced placement, I was also uh, informed that you also received the seal of bioliteracy. You want to talk about that at all? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I also learned from my AP Spanish teacher, Mr. Martinez, uh, that I was the first um, student who was not a native speaker, who was not a native Spanish speaker, to earn a five on the AP Spanish exam from Willowbrook. And I thought that was pretty cool, but that also meant that I qualified for the seal of bioliteracy, mm -hmm. right. which was something that was very nice to receive. It, you know, showed up on my diploma. It was mm -hmm. definitely a nice accreditation to have. I will definitely be brushing up on my Spanish skills mm -hmm. as I enter the academy, so. Any other languages in your future? Um, I definitely want to perfect, like even though I got that score and I got that seal, I, my Spanish skills are not quite where I want them to be, so I, I feel like I'm gonna continue maybe a year or two of Spanish, and then after that I would like to learn Arabic. Okay. Dr. Krauss, any <laughs> reflections? You know, I, I think we look back, you know, Jackson, on, on your high school career, and, and you're sort of the uh, example when we say to students to make the most of, of the opportunities you have. 
but you probably also are the person that has taken advantage of the most opportunity. <laughs> so when we say we have more than 60 different athletics and, and activity uh, programs available for students, I think you've tried to be a part of all of them at some point in your high school <laughs> career. Um, you know, not to mention obviously being inducted to a multitude of honor societies and being recognized for your work. Um, you were recognized early as a freshman with the Outstanding Freshman mm -hmm. Award and then now as a senior with the 88's Best uh, to be recognized by the, the DuPage High School District Board of Education. And I think that's just something that speaks volumes to um, how consistent your career has been, but probably more so how much you have continued to grow and improve uh, and enhance your opportunities that you, that have been available to you. So we're, we're proud of you. I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to be exciting to hear uh, from you. It's going to be exciting to have you come back and speak to our students. Uh, <laughs> In, in uniform, you know, as an officer, that will be something special for Willowbrook High School and, and obviously all of District 88. So good luck and congratulations again on just everything you've accomplished. We know, again, it's just where you're just getting started. Thank you. Yeah. And, we, and we didn't talk a lot about the fact that you're a national merit finalist, yes. you're <laughs> an advanced placement scholar with distinction. Mm -hmm. uh, you've really had an incredible Mm -hmm. An incredible four years, and you know we're expecting some great things uh, <laughs> in the future. How about any comments wrapping this up here? Um, you know, kind of with what you brought up about how like I've participated in stuff. I think Connor brought up a great point when he spoke. Is like freshman year, I was just like Connor. I was a lot more anxious about stuff. I wanted to like I wanted to do more, but I was worried about because my focus was always academic. I was worried about compromising time I was going to need to study for tests and stuff on extracurriculars. And then as I went along, I was able to do more and more because I realized, you know, it's a lot less, it's once you get into it, it's a lot easier than it seems. It's a mm -hmm. lot, you know, mm -hmm. once you understand what you're doing and once you budget your time to where you're putting in the right amount of effort, you have a lot more time than you think. And that's really one of the main things I realized is like, wow, I could have done a lot more, even though I'm satisfied with what I did, you know, it's, it's a lot less daunting, and I think that a lot of incoming students have a lot of fear, but, like, one of the things I told them when I did the eighth grade step up days and stuff was, you're capable of so much more than you think of, you, you're able to do so much more than you may think, you know, don't be afraid to branch out, and that's something that I really realized, was, like, how much more I could branch out. Um, what an incredible academic run and from a family of service oriented people from your mom and dad in the Navy and well, you didn't get to talk a lot about your grandfather who was a school board member in Downers mm -hmm. Grove for years, uh, Bruce Beckman. So I mean, what all the key ingredients uh, going off to serve our country and we congratulate you and uh, applaud your incredible efforts over the last four years and I know you're going to make Willowbrook and District 88 proud. So. Thank you. And as you can see, the tradition of excellence continues at Willowbrook and Addison Trail. We are proud of Jackson and, and Connor's accomplishments and, and just for representing their school and community in such a positive manner. Thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in again to our next segment of the State of mm -hmm. District 88, which will air right here on ACTV. To stay up to date with all the great things happening in District 88, visit our website at www.dupage88.net where you can sign up for our electronic newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.